Thanks, and I want to welcome you to another Washington County Public Affairs Forum. I'm Eric Squires, your president. Today we've got Cindy Dower from the Westside Cultural Alliance. She'll be talking about that organization. Coming up here in the near future, I want to remind you that next week we have Washington County District Attorney Rob Herman presenting. Following that, Twelton Valley Cable Access, TVC TV's Kevin Howard presents. We have yet to announce our program for the 10th of February, but on the 17th, my employer, Hillsborough Empowers Youth will present, and Washington County Auditor John Hutzler presents on the 24th of February. Uh, the last program, yeah, yay John. Uh, on the 3rd of March, we have the last of our regularly scheduled non-election programs, and that's Dr. Jeremy Brown from Portland Community College. He's the new president of all the college campuses. Uh, with that being said, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, ask you for a warm round of applause for Cindy Dower from the Westside Cultural Alliance. Well, thank you so much for having me today. I am excited to be here to present to you and tell you a little bit more about the Westside Cultural Alliance. Um, so as Eric said, I've worked for the Westside Cultural Alliance and I'm only going on about two years, so I'm still pretty um, new to the organization. Um, but it's an exciting organization that's based here in Washington County. And I'll tell you a little bit about our history, some of the new things that we are working on um, and some of the things that we value and that we wanna see in Washington County. Uh, so when you think about or when someone asks you uh, what makes your community a good place to live, you might hear about the geography, it might be close to your work, it might be close to open space, it might be close to restaurants. Well, the Westside Cultural Alliance, we would say what makes our communities a great place to live are art, culture, and heritage, and access to all of those things, and having a vibrant art scene in our communities uh, makes them more livable. And so those are the kind of things that um, we promote and advocate for. Um, so in the past, we've helped um, advocate and promote at different levels, community centers, libraries, historic downtowns, um, art, culture, and music, and local events. And I'll tell you about some of those today. Um, so our history, so the, uh, the Westside Cultural Alliance has been around, well, we've been a nonprofit since 2004, um, but we started even earlier than that in around 1999 uh, when Washington County was putting together its cultural plan. And their goal was to get stakeholders from all over Washington County um, to give input on what um, they wanted to see in terms of art, culture, and heritage, and humanities in Washington County in their communities. Um, so we started as this sort of group of stakeholders that um, was informing the county about uh, where we should go with a cultural plan and the kind of objectives we should seek um, to improve our access to arts and culture. Um, and we've had some longtime board members that have helped shape our nonprofit. Um, and those include Sharon Maroney, who is the artistic director of Broadway Rose Theater Company in Tigard, uh, as well as Janie Scott, who is the head of cultural programs for the city of Beaverton. Um, so those two have been instrumental. Denny Doyle, who's also the mayor of Beaverton, helped uh, found the Westside Cultural Alliance, and he's um, one of our founding members. Um, other board members that are a uh, little bit newer to our organization, we have John Schrag um, from uh, the Forest Grove News Times, as well as the Hillsborough Tribune, and they also publish the quarterly arts guide, the Washington County Arts Guide, um, which is inserted in all of the papers in Washington County, so he's on our board. Um, we have Christina Caravaca from the city of Hillsborough, who manages the Walters Cultural Arts Center, um, as well as all the cultural programming. Uh, we have Sue Pike, who is with the Beaverton Chamber. She's also with Icing Choir and very active in the Beaverton community. Um, furthermore, we have Laura Rollins, who um, helped found Funny, um, Funny Farm Early Learning Center in Garden Home. Uh, and we also have Eric Squires, who's the president of the Public Affairs Forum. So uh, we're very grateful to all of our board members. And again, they are help shaping or helping to shape our organization. 
So one of the things that's coming up is Washington County's cultural plan is actually um, expiring in 2015. And so that's right around the corner. So we'll be looking at, um, you know, potentially seeing some changes in the Westside Cultural Alliance and our role in the countywide advocacy for art. So we really try to take this regional perspective. So many great things are happening at the community levels um, across Washington County, Forest Grove, Beaverton, Hillsboro, Tigard, Tualatin. Great things are all happening in these communities, but there's not necessarily um, connection between them. So we've likened them to silos. We call them the silos of arts and culture because things are happening in these communities and there's um, no overlap or collaboration or sharing of resources. So that's something that we're trying to help break down those silos. Um, so one of the things, and I brought some information for you guys on the back table, um, one of the things we launched this year are arts and culture networking events. So these are hosted by the Westside Cultural Alliance, and we take these events and we rotate them around the county. Um, so our first one was in Beaverton in September, and we had around 50 participants attend, and they're free events. Um, our next one is January 30th in Tigard at Max's Fano Creek Brew Pub on Main Street. And we have another one planned for April 24th in Forest Grove at the Grand Lodge. So one of the goals of these networking events is just to bring in musicians, artists, actors, singers, um, as well as the media and um, public officials and get them all to just learn more about what everyone else is doing, how they get funding, um, how they can collaborate, how they can share resources and promote arts and culture in Washington County in general. Um, so again, I have these postcards at the back if you want more in information about our networking events. Um, so the Westside Cultural Alliance, we actually get our funding through the Regional Arts and Culture Council, which is um, based in Portland, and of course they cover Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties. Um, and so we're supported by them, and we've also received funding in the past from the Cultural Coalition of Washington County, who's given us, they've given us grants to do our website and marketing materials and those kind of things. Um, in addition to livability and increasing the livability of our communities by including arts, culture, and heritage and making sure that we have access to those um, avenues, uh, we've also looked at how arts is also um, part of the economic engine in Washington County as well as around the Portland metro area. So uh, Americans for the Arts, they did a survey or a study in 2012. It was called the Arts and Economic Prosperity 4. It's their, they've done it several times. Um, and they found that the arts industry in the Portland area um, generates $253 million a year through its activities. And uh, that creates about 8,500 jobs and uh, about $21 million in state and local revenue. So you can see that in addition to making our communities more livable and more vibrant places, it also helps um, power the economic engine. So uh, I wanted to share with you guys some of the cool things that are happening around Washington County because we have a couple different goals when we advocate for art, but we also like to create um, and promote visibility. So we do that through our website, westsideculturalalliance.org, um, but we also do that by speaking at events like these um, and just by sharing information. So um, you may or may not know that several local communities in Washington County have their own citizens advisory panels um, regarding arts and culture and heritage. So for example, in Forest Grove, they have the Forest Grove Public Arts Commission and they are appointed by the city council. Um, they give many grants to organizations that provide free programming in Forest Grove related to arts, culture, and heritage. They're also um, raising money for an art installation piece that will go in the Forest Grove Library. Um, and they're bringing back stars in the Grove. So this is something happening in the next couple months here. Um, so this is a talent show that they had done historically in Forest Grove, and they're bringing it back. And so they're auditioning community members now, and they'll hold that at Pacific University. So those are some of the things that the Forest Grove Public Arts Commission is doing. Um, Hillsboro also has an Arts and Culture Commission, and they're doing something pretty unique in that they have started an Arts and Culture Endowment. Um, so they are looking to um, collect legacy donations or have people leave money to the um, endowment in their will. 
They're partnering with the um, Oregon Community Foundation to run this endowment. And they're gonna use that to fund arts and culture organizations in the Hillsborough community for years to come. They also give grants and um, the Hillsborough Arts and Culture Council does a plein air event where they get painters to come and paint different buildings or scenes all around Hillsborough. In fact, um, several painters this past year when they did the um, competition painted the Carnegie Library Building, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. So that's a pretty special deal. And they're actually opening a new exhibit about that, about the building in downtown Hillsboro, the Carnegie Library Building in the Washington County Museum. I believe that um, exhibit will start, I believe it was scheduled to start this month, so that should be up soon. Um, the Beaverton Arts Commission is working to explore a performing arts center in Beaverton. You've probably heard about this. They're trying to uh, get grants to fund a study to see what this performing arts center could look like, and they're advocating for that within their government. They also host a fantastic event every summer called Ten Tiny Dances, where they bring in these stages. They're, I believe, two feet by three feet stages, and they um, hide them sort of around the historic downtown, and they bring in dance from all over the well all over the region that represent cultures from around the world and um, so this is again another way to make arts accessible to our communities and um, really engage the entire area with art um, other things that the Beaverton Arts Commission does is they have a visual arts showcase that they host every year as well at the library um, so that's sort of another signature event as well as outdoor concerts and theater And this is sort of interesting. The city of Sherwood actually, just this past month, broke ground on their new community arts center, and it will be in Old Town. Um, it's right across Railroad Street. They just broke ground. They built a new plaza down in their Old Town as well, so it's right across from that. Um, so the Sherwood Arts and Culture Commission um, is working on how to plan programming for that new center in their old town, um, how to shape and use that building to benefit the community. So it's really neat that they've done that. Um, we should see more coverage of that in the local media as they continue to build it. But I believe that it's scheduled to be done toward the end of 2014. Finally, there's also the Tualatin Arts Advisory Committee, um, and Tualatin uh, just had its centennial in 2013, and they commissioned several art installation pieces, one that's in the library and one that is outdoor. They also just did a um, large welcome sign that was done by a local artist, so they're incorporating art into their public spaces. They also host Art Splash and um, concerts on the commons around the lake they have there in Tualatin. So elsewhere around Washington County, so those were sort of the um, advisory groups to our local governments that we have. Um, but we have a ton of other stuff going around in terms of other nonprofits um, that are here in Washington County. So we have two professional theater companies. I mentioned Broadway Rose, um, but we also have Bag and Baggage Theater in downtown Hillsboro. They're based at the Venetian. Um, in addition to that, we have theater companies, which are community theater companies, which means anyone can go in and audition and play or be in a play or star in a show. Um, so again, we're looking to increase access to arts for people, so we want to support our community theater groups because they're a great way to provide affordable access to the arts as well as um, people can be in the arts. Uh, in terms of dance, there are several schools of dance around Washington County. Um, in terms of there's ballet schools, pre-professional ballet schools. There's also square dancing. Square dancing is alive and well at many of the granges here in Washington County. Um, in Tualatin, there's an Irish dance program, and Tigard has ballroom dancing. There's also Bollywood and Indian dance. Um, so in fact, there is a big celebration they've done. This will be the third year that they will do the Festival of Holly. They will celebrate that at the Washington County Fairgrounds in March. So last year, it had about 500 people that went, and they're expecting a much larger crowd than that this year. But um, the Festival of Holly celebrates the coming of spring and the end of winter. Um, it involves play with different colors, and there's also dancing and music. 
With fine art, Washington County has four different art galleries. There's one in Forest Grove, Hillsboro, Beaverton, and Cedar Mill, and these are open to the public. Um, and there are a variety of nonprofit and for-profit models, um, but you can see them in almost every historic downtown now. There's also photography groups. So people can join a photography group. There's some groups that focus on nature photography, and they meet um, at the Tualatin um, wetlands area. Then there's also groups that just do traditional photography, and they meet at various places. So there's everything from like professional, you have to be juried into this photography group, um, to groups where anyone can come in off the street and join. So again, these are um, opportunities that the Westside Cultural Alliance tries to promote, tries to connect people with, either through our networking events and also through our website. Um, finally, we have singing, and in fact, the barber shop um, event will be coming back to Forest Grove this spring. So th that's been going on for 30 years, um, and we have the Tualatin Valley um, singers that will be putting that on. We also have a lot of youth choirs um, and choirs for adults around Washington County. Some of the signature events that we like to help promote, uh, the Friends of Historic Forest Grove do an annual garden tour in June where they open up the gardens of the um, fantastic homes they have out there and you can tour them. That's a major fundraiser for that group, which is working to restore the A.T. Smith House, which is a 150-year-old farmhouse just south of Forest Grove there. Um, also, coming up, Bag and Baggage will present um, a original adaptation of King Lear, and it should be an interesting perspective. They always like to take Shakespeare and add a little twist, um, so no, no doubt there will be some surprises in that. Um, the Washington County Libraries will be hosting the 10th annual Art of the Storytelling or Art of the Story Festival. They just changed the name last year. So this will be the 10th annual uh, event, and they're bringing in national storytellers as well as local storytellers, and all of the events are free. So those will be happening in the libraries in April. Um, and I encourage you to check that out and see if you um, <laughs> can enjoy some of those stories. Um, furthermore, Broadway Rose is hosting Band Geeks currently, uh, which is a show, a musical theater show about high school band. Um, there's also outdoor concert series in theaters in the parks. Um, theater in the parks this summer, uh, Tualatin Hills Parks and Recreation always hosts concerts and theater events, um, as well as Hillsboro has Showtime at Shoot, which is the longest running outdoor concert series in Oregon. Um, and they also host events in Sherwood and Beaverton. So at the Westside Cultural Alliance, um, our role is to connect all of these efforts, to get people to talk to one another, to help groups um, brainstorm new ways to get funding, which is always a critical element for the arts. How do we fund our program? How do we make it accessible to the public? We can't charge $40 per ticket. We want everyone to be able to come. How do we make um, arts accessible to the youth as well as everyone in our communities. So we try to foster these conversations and raise awareness. We connect with the media and make sure we help our our nonprofits in the area that have smaller budgets learn how to market themselves um, and promote themselves so that they have visibility as well. Um, so we also use social media as a tool to do that as well as our website which is westsideculturalalliance.org. And I was just checking to see how long I had spoke, but I think uh, that was about all I had to say. So um, I will take questions. <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, Bill Kroger, a forum member. Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate it. Um, I've uh, been a, 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 a seasoned uh, ticket holder of the Beaverton Civic Theater for the last three years and have yet to see a bad performance. I just want to tout them a little bit. Awesome. Um, also, we, we used to live in Salem, and we moved up here a little about 11 years ago because of all the art, all the entertainment things that are going on. You know, just, you know I didn't feel I had ex access to that down in Salem. And, and, and even though it's not that far away, the freeway just makes it impossible to just, you know, go up and see things. So 
So we moved, you know, so we're really happy that we did. We, uh, we see the, you know, we, 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 we see the operas, we see the uh, art museum in Portland, we go to the symphony, the ballet. I mean, I think Portland area has, has as much to offer as any city in the country, you know, when it comes to art. It's a really great place to live in that regard. Now my question, <laughs> do you work uh, directly, uh, testify uh, with uh, any governments and stuff in the area like that? Um, well, since I've been with the West Side Cultural Alliance, I haven't had an oppor opportunity to do that yet. I imagine I would, especially, um, I know I'll be working on the county cultural plan, so they'll be rewriting that soon here. So I'm sure I will be testifying um, on behalf of the West Side Cultural Alliance in terms of the changes we might want to see made to that plan or changes to funding that we might recommend, those kind of things. And several of our board members have in the past as well um, talked to the county commissioners specifically um, about funding for the arts. Thanks for your question. Chris Leslie, former member, I already forgot my question. The idea <laughs> of, ah. Uh, I had one when I came up. <laughs> ah, funding. Uh, is there any particular need of a particular group that would need funding more than another group that you would uh, suggest? Um, well, that's hard to say. That's a great question, though. Um, for example, I know the theater in the Grove uh, has a historic theater that they maintain, and they need a new roof on their theater, and that's going to cost them about $30,000 to replace the roof. Now, that's probably, I can't speak about their budget specifically, but I can tell you that's more than their annual budget. Um, so, you know, I, I encourage them to work with the Visitors Association, potentially, to see if there was any way to get some funding to redo um, the roof and get some work on the building because they do draw in visitors from out of state that come and stay overnight especially when they did the Rocky Horror Picture Show there's kind of a cult following of that um, performance so they had people come down and, and stay for several days in Forest Grove from Seattle area and various other places so um, that's one project that comes to mind that definitely needs to be addressed soon to maintain that building but I mean it's hard to say because every group is doing something pretty spectacular in themselves, so. It's political. It does, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Patricia Mayberry, board member, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell me a little more about the Tiger Ballroom dancing program? Yes, that is actually a private um, business that does that. Oh, really? Yes, and I believe it's located in sort of their downtown. Um, and the name of it is currently escaping me, but I could definitely look it up and give it to you. But so they're da uh, ballroom dancing lessons. Okay. Yes. And again, it's privately funded. So it's not through the city of Tigard, but it is um, in their downtown where they have lessons and events and those kind of things. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for asking. John Hutzler, forum member. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> I serve on the board of an organization in the Portland area uh, called Fame Academy, mm -hmm. um, which provides opportunities for uh, adults with developmental disabilities mm -hmm. to uh, develop their artistic skills and perform, and uh, uh, has programs in uh, musical theater, uh, uh, creative writing, dance, a, a wide variety. I'm wondering whether there's anything analogous in Washington County or whether the needs of um, adults with developmental disabilities for arts opportunities is addressed in the Washington County uh, cultural plan? You know, um, <clears throat> that's a great question. And I know there was recently um, a group that, in Forest Grove actually, um, that was working to start programming similar to that. Um, it was just getting started, so it's just a seed that's being planted, but I definitely think it has room to grow, and I, I believe they're seeking out some funding, additional funding to help support that programming. Um, so I'd have to check <coughs> into that further. Um, but yes, I absolutely think there is a need for that, and I don't believe it is addressed in the cultural plan, but it's something that we can definitely bring to the table when we revise it, and I will keep that in mind. So thank you for your comment and your question. Appreciate it. And I, yes, I have heard of Fame Academy as well. I'm familiar with them. 
uh, Tualatin Valley Community Access, which we are broadcast on. Do you have art shows and music shows? And I mean, the politicians have taken over that public access station. I mean, do you uh, have groups being able to get on and show their shows? That is a great question. And for several years, um, the Westside Cultural Alliance produced the Westside Cultural Connection, um, which were on the public access show. And we featured and highlighted different groups, um, arts and culture groups in our area. Um, I'm not exactly clear on why that ended, why that programming ended. Um, but I think you raise a good point that we need to make sure that our arts and culture groups are aware of the opportunity to use that channel and to you know, get their message out that way as well. I know they need to have some training and I know one of my board members um, is affiliated with the TV, T Tualatin Valley Community Television. Um, so hopefully maybe he can help us connect some other arts groups to that because I think that's a great outlet. Well, the politicians said they wanted to fill the potholes and stop the producer, public producers. Hmm, interesting. Hi, uh, Phil Nelson, uh, board member. I'm wondering about schools and understand the schools are suffering from a lack of funding for arts education. Wondering if you or any of your partnership organizations do anything in regard to the public uh, schools K through 12. Yeah, great question. The Westside Cultural Alliance doesn't specifically have um, any programs right now that we do. However, RAC, the Regional Arts and Culture Council, which is sort of our parent organization, they do. Um, they have what's called the Right Brain Initiative. Um, and they're actually in several Hillsborough schools. So um, that's in Washington County, as far as I know, those are the only schools that they're in. Um, but they have a residency program where they bring artists into the classroom. And they're working on what they call STEAM. It used to be STEM science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, but now it's STEAM, so it's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So they're working on integrating arts into that programming. And so the Right Brain Initiative, yes, is working on that. They're, more, um, they're in more schools in Multnomah County, but we're hoping to see them expand in Washington County as well. And furthermore, um, in Cornelius, Centuro Cultural has a program, a STEAM program, for um, elementary through high school students um, that they run year round and also in the summer. So they incorporate arts um, there. It's not necessarily in the school, but it's an after school program and then it's a summer program as well. But you're absolutely right. Um, arts education is important and valuable and we do advocate for it. Um, we're not currently running any programs, like I said, but yeah, thank you. Eric Squires, for a member. I'd like to do a twofer, and the first of my two questions is a proxy for a guest we have, Constance Kasuda, who is uh, um, waving, and she's also the, the new co-chair of CPO6, which you spoke at last September, I believe. Uh, what I'd like to ask on her behalf is, can you tell me uh, how the Westside Cultural Alliance would pivot someone with a low income to participate in arts and culture activities on the west side of Portland? Um, well, again, community theater is a great option, I believe, because the tickets tend to be more affordable, whereas if you try to go see a Bag and Baggage show or Broadway Rose, it's going to be a little more expensive. Um, there's also opportunities to volunteer. So you can be an usher and volunteer at a show, and then you get to see the show for free. Um, you can also volunteer in other ways, whether it's you know putting together publicity or um, whatever skill set you have is valuable to an arts and culture group. So I would encourage someone that maybe is looking to stretch their dollar arts and culture wise and say, what skills do you have? What areas of interest do you have? Um, another example is like Sequoia Gallery in downtown Hillsboro always needs volunteers or docents, volunteer docents. Um, and then you get to admire and view the art um, and get involved with the organization just by volunteering your time. So I think volunteering is a great way to get access um, to some of those programs that may be a little more expensive. My question is as follows. I'd like to um, uh, first acknowledge that uh, you, on behalf of Westside Cultural Alliance, run an amazing website. 
One of the things that uh, I've noticed that uh, you took the initiative to do is that you've listed on one page several of uh, Senator Jeff Merkley's grants newsletters. Grants is, well, basically one of these alchemies that uh, are, are applied to nonprofits to really make stuff happen. It's magic money, and you've given a laundry list. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the, West, uh, the WCA website, the grants newsletter, and how the website operates as a one-stop for people who are looking to get information on, on participating or funding or just building their nonprofit uh, arts and culture organization. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, we have an inventory of almost every arts and culture related group in Washington County on our website. So you can do a search by event, but or also by organization. So that's one way, um, one service that we like to provide. Um, furthermore, yes, I do have sort of a laundry list of funding resources, so different groups that give grants. Um, they're all listed on there. All of the grants are different and unique, so you have to do some of your own research, um, like the Beaverton Arts Commission, the Hillsborough Arts and Culture Council, Forest Grove Public Arts, as well as the Regional Arts and Culture Council and the Cultural Coalition. <laughs> they all sound similar, but they all have very unique purposes and um, different grants. So I, I try to provide all of those links so that someone who's coming there can find a variety of resources and then they're going to have to you know sort of again do some of their own research um, they can also contact me through the website in fact I get a lot of interesting inquiries someone from um, the Tualatin Valley Vineyard um, or the Tualatin Estate um, recently contacted me and said that they were looking for visual artists particularly with a wine theme that they could display in their tasting room and then they would put the artist's name and the price and potentially sell the paintings. So I take that information and I turn around and I send that out to our visual arts list. Um, so we're doing connecting that way as well. I get a lot of inquiries through um, our website about, oh, my son is interested in such and such, he's this age, um, what programs would you recommend? And I'm happy to say, oh, you might check out Stages um, Performing Arts for Youth or point them to a couple other opportunities in their specific um, area that might be good. So um, those are a couple different things we do with the website. Um, we're also on social media, like I said, so I get a lot of press releases or information. We post that up there and then I try to share it online in a variety of ways. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Anthony Mills, former member. Um, before I met you at CPO6, I'd heard your name for years uh, from Eric talking about your journalistic uh, endeavors. And there's a number of journalists or former journalists in the uh, room. I think they'd be interested in, in some of that background and uh, the magazine that you started and the stuff that you're currently working on. Sure, sure. Um, well, that's actually what I did my undergraduate work in. I studied journalism and anthropology, so I kind of doubled them up. And I found that they were both about um, capturing people's stories and telling them in different ways. Um, so I started working at newspapers. I also work in education. Um, but when we moved to Washington County, um, I was interested in finding out all the things that were going on in one publication. So I was trying to put together something like that myself and I was doing the job of four people um, all myself, which was a lot of fun and it was very interesting. I got out to meet a lot of community members. Um, but since then I was offered the position and I just recently got this title. I'm now actually the editor as well of the uh, Washington County Arts Guide, which is that quarterly publication I mentioned um, that is published by the Forest Grove News Times. So it's kind of a great crossover, I find. A lot of the groups that I meet through my work with the Westside Cultural Alliance, I can then feature and help give them more of that visibility um, through my writing. Writing. Um, so otherwise, um, I also, you know, give talks about um, press releases and how to get your information out there. I'm talking um, in February to um, a group in Tualatin about how they can, they're a group of authors, about how they can um, use social media and the print media to get their voice out there and get their message out there. So, yes. I'll go for another question. Please tell us about the Washington County Review. 
okay, so um, that was the publication that I had started in the summer of 2011, and it was monthly, glossy magazine um, that was covering arts, culture, entertainment, but also lifestyle, and I also really wanted to dig into some livability issues, which is actually what brought me to the forum, um, because I had come to the forum a couple times, I believe, in 2011. Um, because I was really interested in looking at, taking a regional perspective at some of the issues like transportation, development, growth, um, planning, zoning, mixed use versus, you know, single family homes. So I really wanted to um, dig into some of those issues that I felt weren't being covered on a regional level. Um, I was also selling all of the ads, doing all of the design, and delivering the magazine. So I found with all of those hats, I wasn't able to quite spend the time on researching those stories as I'd wanted to. So it ended up being more of like a calendar, which people loved. Um, but eventually, it just, um, it, the amount of time it was taking, unfortunately, there were other opportunities I was presented with that I had to say, okay, here's how I can better use my time to still promote arts and culture and still promote things happening in the region. So I haven't quite um, been able to dig into any of those issues yet for <laughs> any of the local publications, um, but they're still something that I'm very interested in, so. I'm a former journalist and was in public relations for a while. Uh, I've been out of it for quite a while now, but it, it was changing when I, toward the end of my career. And uh, I think it's a lot harder to reach people today than it used to be. And I was just wondering what innovative ways you might try to, to, you know, to get out to as many people as possible. Yeah, that's a great question. I still love print media. I still love getting my newspaper every day or three days a week, however often it's delivered now. Um, so I, I still go for print media, but I think social media and Twitter is the place to be for news. Um, I know the Westside Cultural Alliance is on Facebook, and we need to get on Twitter as well, but um, another group that I'm involved with is the Tuesday Marketplace um, in Hillsboro, and they're on Twitter, so we, we use various social media channels. You kind of have to tailor your message, or I should say tailor your channels to your message. So I wish I had something more creative to say than social media. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any other way. Uh, YouTube videos are another huge way um, to get the message out there. So you know, I would say if you can create a video instead of just writing a press release, if you could create a video of either your executive director or maybe if you're a community theater, one of your actors doing a couple lines and put that online, that's a great way to get your, your message out there, especially if you can get it to go viral. So you have them maybe do something that's a little funny and then more people will share it. So social media and using video and audio clips so trying to get away from just that print media which still reaches a, a large audience but trying to get more creative um, we've done some direct mail, yeah. I think you have to be careful. You want to make sure that it's not just ending up in the recycle bin. Um, so if you have a mailing list that you've developed, I know some people have tried just mailing to like a zip code, um, but again, it's hard to measure the results of that unless you have a coupon and someone can actually bring it in. Um, so I think another one is the, an email campaign. That's one thing that we use is constant contact or there's other similar programs out there. So we have a mailing list of just over 400 people of emails that are interested in the West Side Cultural Alliance and things that are happening. Um, so when I send out an email, I get about mm, a 40% open rate, which is pretty good for our industry. Um, so that's another way where you can directly target people that you know are interested in your message um, instead of hoping that they see your listing in the newspaper. Chris Leslie, four member again. Do you and Eric bottle the energy you both <laughs> have and <Yes>. sell it? <laughs> uh. <laughs> My real question is, what is your favorite art? Hmm. 
That's a tough one. I, I think I'm, I like the theater. Uh, I love the poetry because it kind of combines poetry often um, with the spoken performances. Um, and I just, I enjoy going to theater. And it's like the best of literature and poetry um, on stage. And so it, a lot of thought provoking theater can, you know, make you think about your own life or what it means to be human or how we're all similar, even though we may have differently seeming lives. Uh, <laughs> underneath it all, we all have the same human experience. Different opinions, different strokes. Right. Although, I mean, I'm a fan, huge fan of all art, though. I mean, I have glass vases in our in our home or visual arts. I have paintings, so I try to support them all. But I'd have to say that's my favorite. Thank you very Th much. Thank you. Any more questions, folks? Well, folks, I'm going to call for some applause for the amazing Cindy Dower. Thank you. Cindy, thanks for being here. We really appreciate that. Next week, we've got District Attorney uh, Bob Herman. Uh, complimentary handcuffs will be given out, and uh, um, you may be taken away by his speech or taken away if you're misbehaving. Uh, that being said, I'd like to conclude today's forum. Thank you for being here. Have a great day.